Well, we got together last week and we felt like uh, the, the conference calls that we're a part of, all too often we're walking away with more questions than, than, than we have answers. And, and every time we ask a question, three more questions pop up. And we're imagining in our minds, if we're that frustrated, we can't, we can't even begin to imagine what frustration you must be having as well. Today we have a couple of representatives from BP. Uh, this is going to, we're in a marathon, ladies and gentlemen. I think you all know that. And it's going to be a long process, and we're not even leaving the starting gate yet. I think much like hurricanes, in banding together, I am optimistic when I see the manpower and the brain power that we've been able to assemble to come together. We're going to find a way to deal with this. Uh, one way or the other, we're going to be dealing with this, and I believe that we can deal with it the proper way. So I appreciate all of your interest. That only goes, that's, that sort of shows right here the, the, the emphasis that this is creating. I appreciate all of you being here today. We are vulnerable. We're out there, all three sides of us sitting, and uh, we are working diligently with the county, with the state, and with all local officials trying to do the best we can for our citizens and for our environment. You're strictly in a support role right now, which again, for a law enforcement officer, I can tell you is very frustrating for me because I'm in a reactive mode. I don't like being in one of those. But just let you know, your Scambia County Sheriff's Office is here. We've got all of our folks on standby. They're here to come out and assist. Uh, expect to see our trailers out here feeding folks. When the volunteers get out here and get to helping with the beach cleanup and all that, we're going to be right there with you in a law enforcement mode and in a support mode. As far as environmental resources, depending on what gets here, when it gets here, how it gets here, I can tell you that our priority are going to be the seagrasses and the salt marshes. Why is that? I mean, people say we need our beaches for tourism. Absolutely, we do. If we, if we lose our seagrasses, we lose our salt marshes, we've lost our nurseries. Now, that's, a, 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 that's a longer term implications. We can clean the beaches, but if the, if the fish don't have a place to go as a nursery and feed and grow, we have much longer term impacts. So our priorities, to the best of our ability, is focused at trying to protect those areas and get the oil, if and when it gets here, to a place where it can get cleaned up immediately and, and get off the shore. Monitoring. We have already established air monitoring. Uh, EPA has come down with some of their mobile monitoring stations. We had our own, we do ambient monitoring all the time in this area. We're looking for this particular event, we're setting the baseline for VOCs, which is volatile organic um, uh, hydrocarbons. And we are setting a baseline for what it is that exists before we get an impact in the water, and sorry, in particulate monitoring 2.5. The other thing we're monitoring is the, the water quality and sediment quality, again, to get a baseline. So what does it look like today? That monitoring will continue routinely through this event so that we can look at changes and we can monitor it and document it. We are deeply saddened by the tragic <laughs> event that happened here in the Gulf, not only for those lives that were lost, but also for the communities and families that are impacted. As a former Floridian, I know how much the beaches are a part of your lives and your communities and your business. And BP is responsible for this, and we're going to be here to see this process through. Our, I wanted to provide some updates, but first I'm going to tell you about our, our four priorities. Our first priority is to stop the spill underwater. We're currently using remote-operated vehicles to go down and try and trigger the blowout valve. It is a mile underwater, so that's why we're, it's, it's been, um, it hasn't been as quick as we had hoped. Our other option that we're using is dispersants under the water at the source. Um, we are also focused on cleaning up the, um, the oil that's on the water using dispersants. We are looking at a cap and dome process that would be a temporary fix for the spill and that it would, it would uh, direct the oil to a, a storage area until they can get the relief wells um, drilled. The relief wells will take about three months, but we're expecting that the um, cap and dome process will be ready in a week. The, the other two areas that we're focused on is preparing the communities and the beaches and then working with the, the citizens to prepare them for, for the, the oil. We have brought in, this is a globally, global effort, we have brought in people, the best minds from all over the world to work on this uh, oil spill and, and get this situation um, stopped and resolved and mitigate as much of the impact as we can.